This chocolate cheesecake recipe is the ultimate dessert to satisfy your sweet tooth cravings. Creamy, rich, and packed with chocolatey goodness, it's a guaranteed crowd pleaser. But not all goes as planned, so watch until the end of this video to see the problems I had in making this simple recipe and the solutions I used to fix them. Now let's get to this delicious chocolate cheesecake recipe. Begin by preheating your oven at 350 degrees, and that's what we will cook our pie crust in. We're going to use 24 Oreo cookies. You could use some other chocolate flavor uh, sandwich cookie if you'd like, but I found that Oreos work the best. Now I'm using a food processor, but you could use a baggie with a uh, rolling pin if you wanted to do that. Then pour in, drizzle in your five tablespoons of unsalted melted butter and just pulverize this until everything is nice and moist. And this is what you'll end up with, a nice wet sandy mixture. Then I'm gonna take and pour that straight into my nine inch spring form pan, and I'm gonna level it out with my rubber spatula. And then I'm gonna take, I like using the bottom of a measuring cup to just press down the uh, crust and you want to compact this down really, really well. You can go up the sides as well if you'd like. You don't have to go all the way up to the top, but I find that just um, putting a little bit of an edge on there makes it nice. You're gonna bake this at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes and then pull it out and let it cool. Now I'm starting to prepare my cheesecake. I'm starting with the chocolate that is going to flavor this awesome dessert. I'm pouring in a quarter cup of hot coffee to help melt those chocolate chips. I have both semi sweet and a little bittersweet in there. If you find that it's not really helping the melting process, microwave it for just a second and then you'll get a consistency like this. After you have that going, let's start with our mixer. Put the paddle attachment to it and get out three eight ounce packages of cream cheese. They must be room temperature, must be room temperature for so many reasons, but you want them super soft. Beat this up until it it comes out a nice, smooth, creamy consistency. And while it's starting, I'm gonna put in a quarter teaspoon of some salt and one full cup of sugar. This is gonna make it nice and sweet. It's, this is such a delicious cake. I'm making this cake actually for a friend's birthday. So uh, I made it the previous year and she wanted another one. So here we are. Now you are going to need to periodically scrape down the bowl if you're using a stand mixer like I'm using. I don't understand how some of these people, they, they complain, they go, oh, the stand mixers are terrible. They don't even mix things well. I gotta scrape the bottom of the bowl. Yes, that's kind of part of the deal. Well, okay, back to the recipe. I'm adding a quarter cup of sour cream and a full tablespoon of a really nice vanilla. This cake, I cannot tell you, this cake is so, so delicious. Um, to that, I'm adding four whole room temperature eggs. You wanna add them one at a time really slowly so that they get incorporated into the mixture and you have a nice homogenous mixture uh, that you're gonna work with before you put the chocolate in. Now, again, scrape down the bowl, scrape it down. You see that yolk on the side. I wanna get everything mixed in really well and make sure you dig down on the bottom too because there's always something hiding down in the bottom of that bowl. I'm also adding sifted flour. This is three tablespoons of sifted flour. This is to help give the cake more structure Make sure that you absolutely sift your flour if you put some in, because if you do not, you're gonna end up with clumps of flour and that's not gonna be nice. So here we have our chocolate. Oh, this is just so satisfying to watch. The mixture for this chocolate, I did not mention it before, but it is a combination of semi-sweet chocolate chips and bittersweet chocolate chips. I have one full cup of bittersweet chocolate chips and three quarters cup of semi-sweet. It's nice to have that combination because if you just go all semi-sweet, it becomes just a little bit too sweet. The bittersweet tends to help balance the flavors out so you don't have something that's super sappy sweet. I know I sound like a broken record, but make sure you scrape your bowl down throughout this process just to make sure there's nothing hiding in the bottom. And turn your oven down to 325 degrees, and I advise you highly to use your uh, spatula and just hand mix the batter before you pour it into the crust because you wanna make sure that everything is super, super well combined. I'm pouring it into the crust, then I'm going to level it out a little bit. You can use the spatula to do that. You can do a little shimmy with the pie uh, pan if you wanted to do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this in the oven, 325 degrees for 20 minutes, and then reduce the temperature to 300 degrees 
degrees and bake it for another 30 minutes or until the cake's edge is set but the center is wobbly. Turn the oven off but leave the door closed and allow the cake to rest for another hour in the oven. Then remove it and let it cool before putting it in the fridge overnight. This is what I have. Ah, it's scary. <laughs> Look at that big crack. Well, I'm making a ganache that's going to help fix that crack right now. I take a third of a cup of chocolate chips and a third of a cup of hot cream and let that sit and melt it. In the meantime, I'm going to loosen up the cake from the edges of the pan just so that we have a nice clean release. There's nothing worse. Well, maybe a big crack like that is worse. But anyway, I uh, did my best to loosen it and bam, there we go. Really nice and clean. It, the, the cake dismounted from the pan super well. I love that edge. It looks so pretty. So how am I going to fix that top though? Ah, uh, crazy. All right. And it slid right off the pan into the, this is straight onto the carrier. And this is my ganache after I have it nice and melted. And I'm going to fill those voids with the ganache and um, level everything out. And I'm telling you, the, the birthday girl and her family, they had no idea that it had a super big cracked top because it was all filled out nice and level. So uh, it actually it gives it a little something extra because it's almost like a ganache filled chocolate cheesecake. <laughs> anyway, it comes out beautifully. I just cleaned off the edges and here you go. So I hope you have a chance to make this recipe. I was unable to taste it because I had delivered this to my guests, but I was assured that it was even better than the year before. So if you enjoy this video, like and subscribe. Also check out some of my other sweets and bakes on my playlists. And in the meantime, I'll see you next time.